All right, so thanks to all of you for your patience this morning. We finally have guests flocking in, so we're going to officially get started. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all today. I'm Angie Adams, and I'm the CEO of Pencil, and I get to lead this fearless team. Uh, and I have to say thank you to the full team, the board. Uh, I've never worked with such a passionate, committed, dedicated team. So thank you all for your love and generosity. And thank you all for joining us for our third back to school breakfast to kick off the school year. Uh, obviously it is virtual today. So bummer that we're not eating bacon on Belmont's beautiful campus, uh, but uh, hopefully we will be back there next year. So just a reminder that Pencil's mission is about linking community resources to Nashville public schools to help young people achieve academic success and prepare for life. And obviously you're here because that motivates you and resonates with you and you're interested in learning more. So before we get too far in, I wanna say thank you to some great sponsors who helped us get here today. Pinnacle Financial Partners, yay Bob Lawhon and team. Uh, and then our principals list sponsors, Byrne Foreman, FCA Venture Partners, Maynard Cooper and Gale, Nashville Electric Service, Southwest Airlines, and Stantec. And to our generous teachers list sponsors, and there are so many that I just need you to direct, you, direct your attention to the program. See if you know any of those fine folks, and if so, say thank you. We couldn't do our work without you. And this year, we could not have done this event without our amazing co-chairs. They are a diverse team, they are a powerful team, and they are so generous with their time and their support. So thank you very much to Haley Aiken of ESA, Rashad Fakrudin of NES, Whitney Haley of FCA Venture Partners. You guys are awesome, thank you. And uh, just, I mentioned earlier as we were doing our shuffle ball change for a minute, uh, all the ways in which we support public school students, from reading with elementary school students to mentoring and guiding the career development of high school students, even doing work at our family resource centers, like helping teachers and students remove barriers to attendance by helping families with housing, with food. Um, it's all about how do we help these families and students succeed. And we didn't let COVID stop us. We didn't let the tornado stop us. We are unstoppable. So we are gonna to continue to do this work, whether it's virtual platforms, curbside pickup at the Teacher Resource Center, whatever it is, we will continue doing that work. Um, and I know we have many uh, MMPS folks with us today. So if you were on Team MMPS, would you use your reactions to give us a thumbs up so we can see your affiliation and say a hearty thank you for your commitment and dedication to our students. And certainly, no one on the team is more dedicated than Dr. Adrienne Battle. Uh, I'm lucky enough to call her a dear friend, uh, and she is a fearless leader, let me tell you. Uh, we are privileged to have her leading the charge. So Dr. Battle, I will turn the virtual floor over to you. Good morning, and thank you so much, Angie, and thanks for all of you for being here. You know, MNPS started our second week of school yesterday, and I couldn't be prouder of everyone in our district for the way they started this unique new year in the virtual learning environment. That goes for everyone from the smallest pre-kindergarten students to the most experienced teachers and principals. While I won't try to tell you that everyone is completely comfortable just yet, I do know that everyone is making adjustments and working hard to make this school year a success. And Pencil, as usual, has been a huge help. As Angie mentioned um, earlier, last week, Pencil completed deliveries to our schools so that every teacher could have a bag of supplies to start the school year as a result of the Together for Teachers campaign. That required a tremendous effort, and we are so grateful to all of Pencil's sp sponsors, donors, staff, and volunteers for everything you did to make that happen for our teachers. It was truly an exciting day for us in MMPS. That's just one example of Pencil's work to bring our schools and our community together so that our students and teachers can have the resources they need. Earlier this year, after the tornadoes in early March and the arrival of COVID-19 pandemic forced us to close our school buildings, Pencil continued to connect our students and families to vital supplies. I will tell you the innovation, the commitment, 
it's just it was just unheard of I, we pencil just always was ready to step in and support us even though we were facing new territory whenever we have a complicated problem we need to solve my first call is always to angie to say who can we bring to the table here or who should be our partners in this work so thank you to every one of you in the audience today for supporting this great organization because whenever you support pencil you're supporting our schools too now before i turn it over for the official e bronson ingram award presentation i want to share a couple thoughts with you about this year's recipient our late school board member anna shepherd who passed away earlier this summer anna was a tremendous leader on the board and in the community she was a kind person with a big smile and laugh, but she also was a fierce fighter for students, not just from Donaldson, Hermitage, and Old Hickory, but throughout the district. I know that Anna wouldn't want us to let up for one second in our mission to provide a high quality, equitable education for every MMPS student, no matter what kind of circumstances we might be dealing with. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you Hank Ingram, Business Development Manager of Ingram Industries Incorporated to present this award. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Battle, and, and what a great testament to this year's honoree. I'm, I'm so delighted to be here to present this special award uh, named in honor of my grandfather, Bron Bronson Ingram. Uh, my grandfather believed that harnessing the resources of both the community and business partners were essential to support public schools. Uh, not only was my grandfather instrumental in Pencil's founding, but his company, Ingram Industries, has been a proud Pencil partner since the beginning. Each year, the Ingram Award recognizes a community leader who has played an instrumental role in bringing community support to Metro schools, someone who has contributed to public education in a way that is long lasting and meaningful. I'm honored to present this award to, and in memory of, Anna Shepard, someone who has dedicated countless hours, professionally and personally, to supporting our students. Anna was a true advocate for public education and Metro schools, and worked every day to improve the lives of our students. It was. Anna's role started as an MNPS parent and quickly grew from there. As she that. became active with McGavick Band Boosters, serving as president Ingram of the Barrett Booster here. Club and a board member of the McGavick Ingram. Cluster Coalition. She was in her third term and 10th year serving on the Metro Nashville Public School Board of Education, representing District 4, and, as, and was the acting chair of the Board of Education. Please take me in a, uh, a moment to recognize the, uh, the life and the impact of Anna Shepard. to jump back in and speak for a second. This is Angie and just say that in my gosh first week on the job as leading pencil, Anna took the time to sit down and talk with me and to really bring me up to date on a lot of what pencil had been doing to serve the district and how she dreamed of pencil serving the district. She was always available and always had a smile on her face. So it is such an honor to get to present this award to Anna. And Larry, thank you for joining us today. And thank you for sharing your life with us and with the community for so many years. What an incredible person whose legacy will not be forgotten. I'm Haley Aiken, an interior designer at ESA and a co-chair for this morning's event. On behalf of my fellow breakfast chairs, Rashad and Whitney, I'd like to thank you for supporting this wonderful organization. Pencil's work is possible because of community partners like Ingram Industries and community members like Ms. Shepard. 
who invest their time and treasure helping our students be successful. We've invited several special guests who participate in Pencil's work to share their stories with you directly. We're calling these mini panels our impact sessions, and we're excited to introduce you to some of the students, teachers, business partners, and district leaders who we collaborate with to support Metro schools. At the conclusion of each impact session, a Pencil staff member will take questions from the group for a short Q&A before we come back together in about 15 minutes. Feel free to participate and ask questions or just enjoy your coffee and sit back and listen and learn. Some of you are gonna be staying in the main room while others are gonna be divided into the two other sessions. For those of you going to another session, you're gonna receive a pop-up to go to your session. It may take a second, but don't worry, we'll get you there. We hope that these stories will motivate you to get involved with our public schools Great things are happening in Metro schools every day. We see it, our pencil partners see it, and we can't wait for you to see it too. Thanks. Oh, hello. Good morning. My name is Bailey Tidwell, and I'm the Family Resource Coordinator for Pencil, um, and my school is at Glencliff High School. And I am Tomi Davis. I am the Academy Coach here at Glencliff High School. And I think Bailey and I are known to pencil in retro as the dynamic duo uh, because we work so well together and we try to do a lot of the things together to help our students um, be successful. Yes, and we actually have two students on here, um, Leslie and Angie. They'll be talking here in just a little bit. We're gonna ask them a couple of questions. Um, they're Glencliff Student Ambassadors, they're awesome kids, and we're really excited that you guys get to hear from them and hear their perspective. Um, so I'm the Family Resource Coordinator, as I said, for Pencil. So in that role, I service the students and community members here at Glencliff. Um, I service the entire cluster where I provide the families with food, clothes, hygiene products, um, any sort of services that they need, whether that be tutoring, things like that, through my community partners, who are all Pencil partners. Um, so to kind of give you an example, one of my big partners is Second Harvest Food Bank, and I provide food for kids throughout the school year so they can go grocery shopping. It's kind of like a pantry type situation at Glencliff. And right now that kind of looks more like a drive through distribution <laughs> and I host those every Wednesday. Um, so that's just like one of the many things that I do. Um, my top priority is the homeless students that go to our school. Um, right now we're sitting at about 96, that changes every day. Um, and so those students, I help them make sure that they have attendant, good attendance, good behavior, food, clothes, hygiene products, things like that. And so what I do at Glencliff is kind of the opposite. So Bailey makes sure, we like to say that the kids come to school and I make sure that when they're at school that they have opportunities to help them, um, whether they are going to college or they're going to the workforce. So I work with our school's uh, business part, academy business partners, who are pencil partners that help provide experiences for our students, such as field trips, job shadows, internships, um, guest speakers. And so I make sure I host our advisory board meetings every month, but I make sure, and I'm that business partner liaison um, to give those students the opportunities that they need uh, to help them prepare for the future. Together at Glencliff, Bailey and I oversee parent and community engagement. And so we try to work together to knock out a couple of our big community-wide events um, and just making sure that we are connecting the outside world to the students at Glencliff. Um, so if our two students are on, we're gonna let them introduce themselves. Angie and Leslie, are you guys here? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. All right, Leslie, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Give us your name, your grade and the academy and pathway that you're a part of. And then Angie, you can go next. Well, hello and good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Sandoval, and um, as Ms. Davis might have mentioned, I um, go to Glencliff. Um, I'm in grade 12, so I'm a senior this year, um, and I'm in the academy of agriculture, automotive, and technology. And which pathway are you a part of? Oh, sorry, I'm in the animal and plant biotechnology pathway. Awesome. All right, Angie. Uh, hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm Angie Sanchez. I'm a current senior at Glencliff High School. I'm one of the ambassadors this year. 
I am part of the I am also part of the Agriculture, Automotive, and Technology Academy and the Technology Pathway. So, uh, you have that. Yeah. Um, so, what business partners have each of you worked with? Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, I was able to work with uh, TSU um, in the last few years, um, and I've had internships with them and I've had chances to actually go in to their campus and just uh, see everything and uh, meet a lot of the amazing business partners that we were able to work with. Uh, for me, I actually met several of our business partners at our um, panel meetings, I believe they're called. Uh, but the, mo the ones I actually worked with were the fire department, their credit union, and JA um achievement of middle tennessee um can you guys share an experience that you've had with a business partner that really stood out with you that might have been a job shadow or a field trip experience or a guest speaker so uh, which of those which business partner stood out to you guys the most i guess i'll go um uh one of uh i'll speak out kind of a, about two of them. Uh, like I mentioned before, TSU has really been uh, a business partner that I've been heavily involved uh, with. I've had um, weeks of internships with them where I was able to go to their campus and learn so many things from a lot of their professors. And then JA, like uh, Angie mentioned, we were able to go um, to different um, elementary schools and like kind of help give lessons to those little kids and speak to them about Jay, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, for me also, uh, I think the JA High School uh, Heroes program was super impactful on me, as well as when the fire department came and just spoke to us about our different personalities and our different learning styles. I just want to talk briefly. So our Academy Ambassadors, we try, Bailey also oversees that program with me, um, but we try to make sure that our students are prepared with more skills than just walking backwards and leading tours. So we give them, they have, as combined, have served over hundreds of hours of volunteer um, with our local feeder schools. And so the girls are talking about Junior Achievements High School Heroes Program. So uh, once a month, we would go over to Glencliff Elementary School, which is our feeder school that we share a property line with. And they would lead uh, sessions um, created by JA to the second graders. Um, and so JA would come and train them and give them some skills. And then they would take those skills and pour it into the uh, second graders at Glencliff Elementary School. So the High School Heroes program um, has been a great addition to our ambassador team and just kind of giving those students the skills that they need. Okay, so either one of you guys can answer this next question. Um, how has the Family Resource Center supported you or how have you worked um, with the FRC, which is me? <laughs> um, well, I'll go first. Um, so this is a, a an amazing question because honestly um the frc the family resource center has been such an amazing help especially to our school um i've personally been able to work with miss bailey and miss davis this summer which was amazing i was able to have a five-week internship uh, internship with them sorry um which was so cool. I got to see everything behind the scenes about what Miss Bailey does um, and all the hard work that goes into it every single day of the week. Um, even though she maybe just hosts like two distributions a week, she works all week. Um, to be able to um, have all those supplies and have everything ready for other people. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. Wednesdays, we would do uh, second harvest food distributions. Um, and the way Miss Bailey was able to control all those cars, there were hundreds of people that would go um, and collect that food and just the organization skills that takes. I know it took a lot of Bailey, um, but she continues to do, uh, do that for us. Um, and also the diaper distributions, um, were a great uh, help and she would also do those um, every week. Um, so yeah, I got to see personally all the hard work that goes behind that. And it was absolutely amazing. And I know Miss Bailey cares so much about all these kids. So does Miss Avis. Um, and yeah, so that was really cool. Thank you. Angie? 
Uh, so I believe that Miss Davis and Miss Bailey are very supportive in both academics and our academics and just our physical and mental emotional health. But for me, the way that Miss Bailey supported me the most was sometimes I had super busy mornings and I wasn't able to get breakfast or I was coming late to school. And if I went to Miss Bailey, she always had something that I could eat. And that, believe it or not, it really helped me a lot. I was just more focused in school. And that's how I, that's how she supported me. I think that's Panera's. <laughs> I think that's what Angie's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, one of our last questions that we have, and then we'll open it up for Q and A. Um, so what are your plans after you guys leave us? We're not very excited about that, even though we know you're gonna go do great things, <laughs> but what are your plans um, once you graduate uh, from Glencliff? I'll take the lead on that one then. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay, I am trying to figure that out. Um, Although I've had so much uh, help from other teachers um, and Miss Bailey and Miss Davis to try and kind of narrow down uh, my future, I've really had a struggle with that one because I'm a very indecisive person. So I like to do a lot of things, um, but I know for sure I want to go to college after this. Um, and just this year, I'm trying to hone down and really select a couple things that I might be really interested into doing into college right now it's kind of like education and psychology um and all that stuff but yeah miss davis and miss bailey really helped me out to hone down what i kind of want to do after school all right angie i totally agree with leslie uh miss davis and miss bailey have helped us a lot with giving us different uh looks into different careers but currently, I am still looking into colleges. I'm still not sure where I want to go, but I do want to pursue, pursue a career in nursing. So um, you guys heard from us. You guys heard from our kids. So now we'll take about five minutes to answer any questions that any of you may have for Leslie, Angie, Tommy, or myself. Hi, this is Rebecca Fair. I happen to be a pencil board member, and I was curious if you could tell us how many families at your particular location do you feel like you help with the Family Resource Center on an annual basis? Um, that's a tough question. Uh, so through Salesforce, I do keep up with my numbers and things like that. Um, right now we have 1,200 students at the school. And in some capacity, I have serviced all 1,200 students, whether that be providing them with an opportunity with community partners, with business partners, with Tony. Um, about 900 of the 1,200 kids do actually receive physical resources from me, and then the remaining 300 are just kind of experience-type kids that I help them. Um, families, I service the entire cluster for families, so that's our feeder schools as well. I would say I probably service at least 1,500. Um, right now, weekly, I service about 200 families with food and over 500 with diapers. And I mean, just yesterday, we did a laptop distribution and I serviced <laughs> 150 families <laughs> to get laptops. Um, so that's a good question. I wish that I knew how many school, um, families were in all the other feeder schools that I helped. Um, so I would say, Thousands. <laughs> Thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot of uh, Colt uh, Glencliff alum. We would love for you guys to come and hang out with us once the world opens back up. We would love to take you on a tour of your alma mater. You can probably tell us a little bit more than we'll tell you, but we would love for you to come by and get you plugged in. Um, any way that we can. Um, once a cult, always a cult. So please definitely reach out to one of us uh, to get you back in the building. Right. There's actually a Glencliff um, alumni group yes. that are very active partners with the Community Resource yes. Center. They help me a lot and Angie and Leslie both have experience in giving tours to the alumni <laughs> and working with the alumni group. They provide so much support. So if you're not a part of that group, I highly recommend it if you want to get back involved at Glencliff, Tony and I can give you the contact information if you're not aware of it. 
Any other question? Yeah, can I like quickly chime in and just like uh, also like talk about that? Yeah, so what Miss Bailey and Miss Davis are saying is totally true. I was able to uh, host a tour to our alumni and actually they gave me a lesson about our school. So they told me a ton of the history behind it. And it was just amazing to see all these generations of cults that we were able to see. I got to find out what the cool wall was, um, <laughs> where you were lean on and just chill, I guess. And that was just cool. It was just really cool to see where things used to be and how things used to be. So yeah, if you're an alumni, don't be scared to reach out. Uh, we would love to meet you. But yeah, that was all I wanted to say. <laughs> um, to quickly answer these questions in the comments, um, my need, my biggest needs change all the time. Um, I get that question often. One of my biggest needs, I actually, from a business partner, just received a donation of a washer and dryer. And that's really helpful because a lot of our kids don't have a washer and dryer at home. So I wash their clothes here at the school while they're like in class. Um, and then they pick it up after it's all folded and neat and they put it back in their backpacks and go home for the day. Um, right now that kind of looks a little different, but I'm still trying to wash clothes as kids um, are coming to get their laptops and things like that. So right now it's like hygiene products and a uh, laundry detergent. That's probably my biggest need right now. Um, thank what is the best way to support the students that spoke today? I don't know, why don't you ask them? Do you guys have any needs? Leslie's like figuring out college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, right now I don't have anything specifically, but that was great. Like anything really to just, anything you can give uh, to help us uh, would be amazing. Like we literally are thankful for every partner we've ever um, came across with. Either way, um, they've helped us in so many different ways that they might have not. Just like talking to us also helps. Um, like just being real with us, your experiences really do help because um, a lot of times you might be faced with people that um, don't tell you straight up. And so <laughs> if one of you wants to offer your experiences or whatever you can really um, think you could give to us would be like just amazing I think. Yeah. Um, I know that this is kind of coming to an end but I would say that one of the best ways to support kids right now is just through encouraging words. Um, virtual learning has been an adjustment for them to say the least. Um, I know Tony and I both, um, well she just graduated, I'm still in a grad school <laughs> virtual program online um, and even for me, as a 26-year-old, it's hard for me to log on and do my schoolwork every day after working all day. And sometimes I just need someone to text me and be like, you can do this assignment. You can do this. You need to do this. And I have kids messaging me all the time, like, "Miss Bailey, I don't want to do this. I want to go to school. And so I'm, like, constantly emailing and texting kids, like, encouraging them to just do it because I know it's hard and I know it's an adjustment, um, especially when you work all the time. But it's got to get done to get your education, right? So I would say like maybe some short clips of just encouraging the students and Tony and I can get it out to them yes. as well. That's one of the biggest things that I have seen as a need for a lot of kids right now is just that little bit of an encouragement to just keep them going. I'm going today to buy snacks and make baskets for kids today to show <laughs> them how proud I am and to keep on keeping on. <laughs> And um, we just want to say thank you so much for being a part of our session. Um, and we are so happy that Pencil gave us this opportunity to share a little bit more about Glencliff High School um, and to showcase two of our fabulous students um, who are leaders of our Academy Ambassador team. Um, and so if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to myself or Bailey. Or it's kind of like if you reach out to me, you're reaching out to Bailey. If you're reaching out to Bailey, you're reaching out to me. Um, and we will try to get you guys plugged in the best way that we can. Thank you again so much, Pencil, for this opportunity. Welcome, everyone. My name is Bob Kuchar. I'm the Vice President of Partnerships and Programs with Pencil, and earlier today I was able to announce I'm a, a celebrating my sixth year at Pencil this month, and so it has been a, it's been a wonderful journey. I have fabulous folks to work with, and my role at Pencil simply is to be of support to the partnership team, the Family Resource Center uh, group, as well as the LP Pencil Box team. So Without further ado, I have uh, three fantastic human beings that I am looking forward to introducing you to this morning. They are great uh, friends of Pencil, 
and we love of, uh, being of service to them. And so with that, I want to introduce to you Dr. Jennifer Berry, the director of STEAM with the district, Tiffany Griffin Minor, STEAM expedition, expedition coordinator, and Katie Petroli, the director of education at the Parthenon. And so what I'd love to do is, uh, first of all, welcome and thank you for sharing your morning with us and uh, for our three guests, if they could take, you know, a short period of time. We're here for 15 minutes this morning on our STEAM uh, conversation. And so Dr. Berry, I'll, I'll lean into you for an introduction first. All right. Well, good morning. I'm Jennifer Berry. I'm the director of STEAM and science for Metro Nashville Public Schools. But first, I want to make sure we all understand what STEAM is. So it stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. But what it really means is that it's an instructional approach to interconnecting all the, all the subjects into a lesson. So we think of it as a one plus one plus one model, where you take one standard um, from any uh, of the acronym from STEAM, so it could be any course, uh, plus um, uh, any other subject area around one of the four C's. So we're talking about um, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, um, and creativity, so that students understand where this learning occurs. Um, and so, uh, as Angie talked about, you know, we always want to know students to understand the why of what we are doing. And so STEAM really provides that context. Uh, but for that context, you also have to have some relationships built up with business and industry leaders. So it's really similar to the Academies of Nashville. And in fact, we do align ourselves with the Academies of Nashville. Um, so um, do you want me to stop here? Or do you want me to keep going so, so I don't take up everybody's time? You let me know where, where you need me to go. Jennifer, I think that was fantastic. And okay. as Jennifer um, explained to us, the definition of the acronym STEAM, we are all learning about the T in STEAM this morning. So <laughs> it's a good Most lesson definitely. That, we're all, yes. that, we're all, that we're all learning. Uh, yeah. Tiffany, I'd love to uh, throw the baton to Tiffany and allow her a moment to introduce herself and talk about her work uh, with the STEAM uh, initiative with the district. Good morning. Thank you. I'm sorry I was in the main room uh, for just a little bit of time. <laughs> uh, I am a STEAM experiential learning. I have a really wonderful opportunity to work closely with Dr. Berry and to work with the STEAM partnerships. That's, it's really engaging. Uh, Bob, I've had a good amount of time to work with Todd Chapel. We've gotten to know each other extremely well, logging uh, <laughs> the community partner um, hours, Katie, um, just beautiful relationships to have a chance to nurture as we work to provide these outside of the classroom experiences for Metro National Public School students. Beautiful. Thank you, Tiffany. And that was a great segue for us to get to know Katie at the Parthenon, one of our places that we all know is a major cultural institution for our city and our students. And so as we talk about students going on expeditions, uh, we'd like to hear from Katie to introduce herself. And then Katie, I'm going to ask you a second follow-up question of what might that look like in this new virtual world for the Parthenon? Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Katie. I work at the Parthenon, uh, which hopefully you know is a museum here in town in Nashville. Um, I mean, we deal with not only visitors who come in the door, but part of our mission is to reach out to the community, to people in Nashville, which includes K through 12 students. So we work pretty closely with Tiffany and Jennifer doing STEAM work. Um, and for example, last year we had a, a plan that was only slightly affected by coronavirus but to bring over I think it was about like 6,000 sixth graders um, in MNPS STEAM schools to the Parthenon so they came here for a very special field trip that was focused on um, a couple of different letters of STEAM uh, we did a lot of engineering and arts paired with social studies and then they had to work in groups or they had to come up with some solutions to problems throughout their expedition. This year, um, we are kind of planning twofold. We're not only thinking about how can we still partner with STEAM and host a STEAM expedition. Perhaps that means 
that, um, you know, maybe a site visit, but also as a backup plan, as a safety plan to have a virtual steam expedition to the Parthenon, which would feature probably yours truly doing some of the steam expedition content around the building. Um, and so Pencil has been key for us because they're the folks who can tell us what types of videos are needed and how can the content that we produce not only benefit just you know our general digital audience but how can we specifically make sure it it hits the curricula and the learning standards for um, not just STEAM but across all MMPS and academies. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you for that explanation and thank you for your creativity as you work to make sure that the Parthenon continues to have fantastic impact with the district and, and for our K through 12 students. Dr. Barry, back to you. I wanna, um, as we, we hear from Katie, I'd love to hear from you about other ways in which you've utilized uh, your relationships with Pencil and Pencil Partners and how they've made an impact on your work um, as you have pushed forth the initiative of STEAM. So great, thank you, Bob. So our mission within STEAM is really to provide students with knowledge skills and experiences that they need as they move into the next level, whether it be middle school, high school, college, or career, really around science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, um, because we want them to be the 21st century problem solvers, right? So um, what are some of the ways that we've really engaged is one around the STEAM expedition. So I know Katie talked a little bit about it, um, but one of our main features within the STEAM work is the STEAM expeditions. And I'm gonna let Tiffany talk a little bit about what that is. But what I would like to highlight here is that in this past year, and we know that last year was a year like no other, we still um, were able to receive over 2,000 hours that have been logged in pencil, uh, which equates to over $231,000 of in-kind donation for the work that our, our partners have supported. Um, throughout last year. And so we know we stopped in March, so we weren't done. So I, it, I'm, I'm amazed at, at what we were able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. Uh, but Tiffany, if you'll talk a little bit about what the STEAM expeditions are, I think that's really the crux of it um, when what we're doing, because we really want to connect our students to um, Nashville. We want to connect them to where does this really fit in real world? And they have to see it, right? You can't be what you don't see. And so it really provides career exposure for them. So Tiffany? I agree. Um, I, the, the main thing that the STEAM expeditions are, are these really rich experiences that directly connect what's happening in the classroom. So one of the things that we found with the STEAM expeditions is that having pre and post activities that are directly related to the expedition, not only connects the student to the material, but it also connects them really deeply to what could be next. So say, for example, with the STEAM expedition that was at the Nashville Zoo, many of our students connected specifically to the zoologist who was hosting the STEAM expedition. And then I have to mention Katie here again, because Katie uh, and the Parthenon were our very last expedition. Uh, right before we left school for COVID, that was the very last uh, STEAM expedition that we had. And if I'm not mistaken, Katie, I think we hosted at least 150 students that particular day. Uh, and it was extremely meaningful because what those students have an opportunity to do is not only engage in like rich learning material, but they're outside of the classroom to feel and see and touch. And to just go back to another thing that Dr. Barry was saying, it's about what the STEAM expedition taught. And that's one of the things that we're working on just currently right now is making sure that the STEAM expeditions are. So even in this virtual environment, the STEAM expeditions are uh, these rich learning opportunities in this virtual platform for our students to engage not only with professionals, but with cultural offerings all around Nashville so that they can see beyond what's happening right now and look forward to what they will again have an opportunity to experience. And that's really meaningful for us. And very last thing I'll say, because I get really, really worried about the expeditions. So I know Dr. Berry mentioned that we had about 2,000 hours when we finished uh, in March. I think either March 5th or March 11th was like our last day, but I cannot remember exactly. So far this summer, just, just the summer, like May, June, July, we have already about 
90, at least 96 community partner hours logged in terms of just putting together the virtual experiences. So they are, and it's really rich. And I have to thank Dr. Berry for that. Really, really has provided wonderful leadership in the area. And thank you too, Katie, because we are moving forward. Tiffany, thank you for that. And to our audience, I just got the five minute call. So we have five minutes together. I want to repeat something that I've heard many times from Dr. Barry and also from Donna Gilley, the director of the, uh, of the Academies of Nashville. And that is students have a very difficult time being something that they have not seen. So you, as Donna and, and Dr. Barry say, you got to see it to be it, right? So I want to always express that and repeat that um, because we have that ingrained in our pencil brains because of Doc, or Donna Gilly and Dr. Barry. So thank you for that. Um, Dr. Barry did a great job of explaining this. Many of the folks on this call today are already ingrained in partnership work. But if you're not, this is the pitch. This is the pitch because we all have time. And it's very interesting about this new world that we're living in. My, my five, five, six years or five years of being at Pencil, one of the big barriers that we had with partnerships was transportation <laughs> and of managing our interstate and getting partners to schools. Well, guess what? We don't have that barrier anymore. <laughs> that means we all have more time that we can support students and teachers. And so as we look forward to making sure that we move in that direction, um, we are here to help harness the time and the talent of everybody on this call. Let Pencil be your matchmaker. Let us make sure that there are healthy relationships between our partners and our schools. And um, with that, Katie, the last question before we do a little Q&A. Um, as you are coming on into your role at the Parthenon, relatively new, uh, what have you received from Pencil as far as coming into this space understanding pencil what has pencil provided to you as you navigate your relationship with the district so the parthenon has been a pencil partner for years i have been in my role for approximately um, a year and a half almost yeah about a year and a half and when i started here I started looking out for ways to find, you know, partner schools or what we can offer to benefit um, really K through 12 learning. And it was a meeting with Bob, with you, me, um, and, and Sandra, and talking about what have we done in the past. Um, institutionally, we are a very small museum. So we have one pencil person. <laughs> and so, I mean, in a way, pencil was our institutional memory. And they helped us, they helped me know what resources have we provided in the past in terms of programming, lessons, um, but it also now is a resource where, you know, I can say, oh, well, STEAM Expedition, now I need to come up with a pre and post activity. Hey, Bob, Sandra, who's our, our, our coordinator, you know, what other examples do our other partners using so that there is some kind of through line throughout all the community partners that Pencil has so that we're all creating resources that I can see what other people are doing and create something that is to that level um, and so for me, that is really, really important to just kind of be that bridge between um, our, our museum and the students who live here, who are a part of Nashville, who are a part of our story, um, but might not know that because it, the museum isn't seen as a place that you just go visit every single day. So it, it Pencil helps us um, reach out to the people who grew up here and who call Nashville home. Katie, thank you for that. So for the entire group, please help me thank our guests today, Jennifer, Tiffany, Katie. Welcome back everybody. I hope you enjoyed your impact session this morning. I'm Whitney Haley, General Counsel of FCA Venture Partners and also a proud board member of Pencil and co-chair of this event. Okay. Thank you to all our special guests who joined us this morning at the impact sessions. I heard from Bailey and Tommy and two of their students, Leslie and Angie at Glencliff Glen High School, where we saw a lot of cult pride and they talked to us about the Family Resource Center and how that's changed during the pandemic. 
and also their academy programs and the various internship programs that they have done with TSU and the fire department and other organizations. Having grown up here in Nashville, I've always known of Pencil, mainly through their work with the LP Pencil Box. But as I got to know the organization better, I learned that they do so much more than that. Not only are they supplying classrooms with high quality supplies and offering this free resource for our teachers, they're inviting businesses into the schools to creatively show students firsthand the opportunities available to them and to mentor students one-on-one. -on -one. As one of our students just spoke to, one thing you can do now is talk to students and tell them about your experiences and what opportunities they have. Personally, that business involvement in the education system is what really got me motivated to get involved and to join the pencil board. In my business as an investor, it's all about the return on investment. Is this deal going to be a multiplier? And so for me personally and my company, pencil makes that decision really easy. Fundamentally, we are in alignment and believe with Pencil's mission, but Pencil also shows us a tangible return on our investment. So now I'm gonna show you how Pencil is going to be a multiplier for education in our community. For every dollar donated to our Teacher Resource Center, the LP Pencil Box can return $8 worth of supplies back to the schools. A single business partner at a school will often invest over 100 volunteer hours every year through employee engagement. And that's not to mention just the immeasurable value created by mentoring relationships. And lastly, in 2019, Pencil returned $4.9 million worth of community investment into our public schools. That's more than three times their operating budget. But Pencil can't do this alone. Like any great organization, the power of Pencil is and always has been our people. And I'm not just talking about the incredible Pencil staff and volunteers, but I am talking about all of us here this morning and really everybody in the Nashville community. I wholeheartedly believe that education is the great equalizer and that each and every one of us can be responsible for assuring our young people see the opportunities available to them. You can make a difference and now we're going to show you how with this heartwarming red pepper video that really embodies pencil. Your kids might not go here. But these are all our kids. They will be your neighbors, your coworkers, the people who determine the Nashville of tomorrow. But today, they need us. Our students need us to help them imagine what's possible, to give them a vision for the future and the tools, the skills, the resources to make that vision a reality. Join us, partner with Pencil, and help our kids achieve all that they are capable of. With your participation, we can connect public school students with mentors and programs that let them explore careers, experience workplaces, and train for the future. With your help, students can develop the reading skills they need to succeed in school in careers, and in life. And with your support, they can get the classroom supplies they need for hands-on learning and experimentation. Join us, become a Pencil Partner, and help Nashville become a place where all of our students are set up for success. Because public education is everyone's business.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Rochette Pakrudin of Nashville Electric Service, and I've been affiliated with Pencil for nearly 20 years. I feel that Pencil is such a special organization for the way they recruit professionals like me to mentor students who want to learn more about my industry and think about it as a future career path for themselves. So like my fellow breakfast co-chairs, Whitney and Haley, I also personally invest in Pencil and invite you to join us with a personal gift of your own this morning. And thanks to each of you who has already given. We sincerely appreciate it. So that Pencil can continue to do this essential work supporting students and teachers, we're asking everyone to please consider making a minimum donation today of $50. The great news is that through the generosity of Pencil, major donors and board members, your gift will be matched dollar for dollar. So your $50 will turn into $100. And as Whitney shared, Pencil makes every dollar go far. So please take your phones. You should, just, you should have just received a text message with a link to donate. And if you didn't get a message, simply text BTSB20 or 76278. And if you prefer to use a laptop, just visit btsb20.givesmart.com to give online. Our goal is to raise $15,000 for Pencil program this year. Uh, thanks to our early bird donors, we're already 25% of the way there. We have a fun donation thermometer to show us how we're doing. And it should be coming up. So while you're making your gift, I want to share one of my dozens of favorite pencil stories with you as I have seen firsthand the impact a strong pencil partnership can have on students. Around 20 years ago as a young professional, NES had just begun seeking volunteers to engage in their partnership with pencil and being allowed the opportunity to go inside a class classroom to read and mentor to kids. And later I was recruited to serve um, on the Academies of Nashville Engineering Partnership Council, which Pencil plays a big role in. And before I knew it, I was speaking to kids, mostly freshmen in the thousands every year, while personally mentoring several. One of the coolest things happened after Hillsborough High School in 2016 had just advanced to the state basketball tournament. I watched part of it on TV the night before. They usually don't show bas high school basketball games on TV. And when one of the star basketball players, Darius Ferguson, emailed me the following morning about career advice and interning in engineering at NES, you know, the biggest day of his life just took place and he's thinking about his career pathways. Just imagine. So you see these students will be our future engineers. What better investment is there in our future than now? I share this because when we talk about how it takes a village uh, to raise a child, Pencil to me is that organization that gathers the village, the professionals, the volunteers, business community, resources, et cetera, to help raise and serve our kids, looking at the kid as a whole child, helping meet also their social and emotional needs such as even helping serve thousands of meals and so forth through the Family Resource Center. And I wanna note, everyone in this village can make a difference. During our annual Black History Month, which I helped put together for Pearl Cone, we bring together, put together a myriad of guest speakers, leaders and so forth in our community to speak at Pearl Cone. And there's a Patri New England Patriots player, a friend, Jawan Williams, after speaking on financial literacy last uh, uh, February, he asked me to include him on future speaking engagement opportunities to, to uh, mentor our kids. And this would not have been available had Pencil not opened the doors to people like myself and many of you to go inside the classroom. And now more than ever, our kids need us to be there for them, to help them achieve their dreams through a solid education, including helping our teachers and school district. So Pencil is an incredible organization worth serving. Thank you. Before we say goodbye, we have two exciting announcements. First, thanks to our friends at Southwest Airlines, you have an opportunity to win two round-trip airline tickets. 
Aren't they the best? Uh, there are two ways to, uh, you will have a chance to win. Make a gift today at any amount or share something you have learned about pencil on social media by tagging us at pencil for schools and using the hashtag pencil 101. This can be on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or all three. Just make sure you do it today before 5 p.m. Pencil staff will draw one entry at random and notify the winner by the end of the week. And second, thanks to our friends at Music Makes Us. We will be ending our back to school breakfast and ringing in the new school year with a performance by talented Nashville School of the Arts student. Thank you for joining us and letting us share why we're passionate about Pencil's work. Now, let's celebrate. Good morning. My name is Sarah Robinson, and I am the Strategic Partnership Coordinator for Music Makes Us at Metro Nashville Public Schools. Here at MNPS, we are so thankful to have a partner like Pencil, and that includes the many ways they support our art, theater, dance, and music education programs. I am thrilled to be introducing one of our very own MNPS students, a young singer-songwriter who will be closing out the program this morning. Here is Robin August, a student from Nashville School of the Arts, performing an original song for you. Hi guys, I'm Robin August Fritch. I'm a 12th grader at Nashville School of the Arts, and thank you so, so much for attending Pencil's Back to School Breakfast. Um, my school is a super accepting community of young creators from guitar to literary conservatory to dance and so on, and I'm gonna miss them and the teachers so much, but I do have hope for the next year, so this song is dedicated to them. Remember to keep your mask on and stay very healthy so that we can all get back to school and some of us can finish out our senior year. Thank you. Wow. You know, I sitting here in an office at Pencil by myself, I'm just getting teary from all the love that is pouring out. Uh, the young talent that we got a chance to observe. Um, just, you know, it's a beautiful community. We are privileged to live here. And as I will echo a point that was made earlier, uh, 
if you want to get involved, please reach out to us. Our website is a great place for you to start. Uh, but a way you can start is just giving encouragement to a student. Right now, I think it's tough for all of us to put on our <laughs> adult clothes and go about our work. So imagine how it is for these kids who aren't getting to leave their homes and are trying to learn and grow academically. So whether it's just saying a kind word of encouragement to a student or becoming a full-fledged pencil partner or becoming a donor to allow us to recruit and support more partners. Uh, however you get involved, we would love to have you. And thanks again to everyone who made today possible. The staff working behind the scenes, the board for recruiting sponsors, attendees. Uh, please go out and share everything you've learned today. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully for principal for a day, if not before. Thank you all so much.